Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The day that the Queen of the Netherlands died. Sophie of Wattenberg, the Queen of the Netherlands, on the 3rd of June 1877, inside of Royal Palace in The Hague, died. She was 58 years old, and following her death, she was shockingly buried in her wedding dress. She was considered a queen who was rather different, as she would separate from her husband, and their relationship was not good at all. But Sophie would be buried in her wedding dress for a significant reason, because she believed that the day she actually died was when she married William III, the King of the Netherlands. This is because of how miserable her relationship was. But what is the story of the day the Queen of the Netherlands died? To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Sophie of Wurttemberg had a very close relationship with her father and she was given a brilliant education and because of this there were many people who considered her a possible match and future wife. But she would be married to her maternal first cousin William who was at the time the future Prince of Orange and later the King of the Netherlands on the 18th of June 1839. The marriage was arranged and her father, although being considered a rather progressive man, wanted his daughter to be married into different dynasties across Europe. Today this would be deemed as a backward thing, but he wanted his daughter to marry monarchs. Before the marriage, King Otto of Greece and also Duke William of Brunswick were touted as possible matches and suitors for Princess Sophie, but the engagement came to nothing and Sophie's ambitious father in particular had doubts about the legitimacy and confidence in the newly established Greek monarchy, which is why he withdrew support for a marriage with King Otto. But chance would stop a proposal from the Duke of Brunswick, as her father said that Sophie was already at the time betrothed. Sophie herself wanted to marry William of Brunswick, over the match with William of the Netherlands, and she would voice this concern to her father, but in the eyes of her father, marrying the future King of the Netherlands was an obvious choice of his daughter, as she would become queen and he would have a significant amount of status that came with being the father of a queen over the father of a duchess. He disregarded his daughter's feelings and beliefs and because of this, Sophie was forced to marry the future Dutch king. Following the wedding, Sophie and William settled into a palace, the Haag, and Sophie did have a good relationship with her father-in-law, the King of the Netherlands, William II. But she did not get along with her mother-in-law, and they were never on good terms. She opposed the marriage, but the marriage between the couple did not get off to the best start. William had in the past fallen in love with Sophie, but Sophie's efforts to resist the marriage were in vain. William would have a number of affairs in his marriage, and he also had a number of illegitimate children but Sophie let him know that she thought he was inferior to her and that he would later be unfit to serve as king. She believed that she could do a better job as ruling as regent and Sophie would also refuse to live with him and she was not devoted to him as she would rather spend her time inside of her private study learning. Early on a divorce was debated but this was postponed and it was deemed not right for a king and a queen but in the May of 1849, Sophie and William would become the king and queen, and their relationship did not get better. They were continually arguing, and their son Maurice died in 1850, and the parents hired different doctors to look after him. But Sophie continued to get pregnant and have royal children, and her third son would be sent to boarding school against her wishes. But Queen Sophie was more intelligent than her husband, and she did not fit his sensual nature Sophie would speak to the press about their differences and she would also deem her husband an unfit king and tell the people of her country this. But the discussions of a divorce continued. Sophie and William both wanted this to happen. But a divorce was believed to be a scandalous thing as they were ruling regents. Prince Frederick of the Netherlands tried to mediate and the couple agreed on a separation without divorce in 1855 and it was said that the couple would be married in the eyes of the public but they would live separate lives. The pair would unite for engagements and Sophie would be allowed to live a private life on her own and to do what she pleased. From 1855 the couple lived in different palaces, William at Hetler Palace and Sophie at Hu Tech Bosch. 
She would travel Europe and would speak with many different other intellectuals, and she also visited her father. Sophie was a European diplomat in a sense, and she visited Napoleon III, and during the Crimean War, she would side with her Russian relatives, with her friends. Sophie would also maintain good relations with other European monarchs, including Queen Victoria. She continued to be a prominent speaker about the arts and also a supporter of many charities, including animal protection, and she advocated the creation of public parks for people to enjoy. She also advocated the education of the mentally challenged, and because of this, she was seen as a brilliant woman of the 19th century. She was a queen, though, who was unusual, as she would not like etiquette, but would champion helping the needy and the poor. However, inside of Hu Tembosh Palace, Sophie would die on the 3rd of June, 1877. She was 58. However, what was interesting was the fact she was buried inside of the Royal Vault of the Netherlands wearing her wedding dress. She was not embalmed also, and she believed that the day she died was the day she married William, as her life was over after this. But Sophie's life within her marriage was a sad one, but at least she managed to get a form of separation, which allowed her to live a life that she sort of wanted, away from her husband's grasp. Thank you for watching and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.